Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this Flame game development series where we are making a simple platformer using the Flame engine. In the last video, we added a heads up display which displays the current score and player health on the screen. And we also added listeners for these values so that the UI updates correctly when they change. So in this video, I want to add a way for players to be able to kill the enemies by jumping on them. But before we get started with that, let's upgrade this project to latest packages. For that, I'll open up the terminal and type in Flutter pub upgrade major versions. The output after running this command might be different for you depending on package versions in your pub spec. But in my case, you can see that now flame is upgraded to 1.2 and flame tiled is upgraded to 1.5. Okay, so now that we have upgraded the project, Let's take a look at all the warnings that we are getting because of this upgrade. First one is the on finish callback of opacity effect that we add to coin when it hits the player. This property is now deprecated and in flame version 1.3 it will be completely removed. Instead of on finish callback, now we are supposed to use the on complete parameter in effects constructor. So I'll just set our callback as on complete in opacity effects constructor and will remove this on finish callback. You'll see the same warning in enemy class as well. And here too, I'll just move the callbacks to on complete and will remove on finish callback. And finally, in the level.dart file, you'll notice that we are getting a warning for importing a file from tiled package. This is because we haven't specified tiled as a dependency in our pub spec. So to avoid this warning, let's go to the pub spec and add tiled as a dependency. And that is it. We now have completely upgraded our project to latest version. Next, let's see how players can attack enemies. From the last video, you might remember that we added code in on collision start of enemy class to call hit method on player and reduce the health. But if we want to allow players to jump on enemies to attack them, this code cannot be called unconditionally. We will first somehow need to detect if player is hitting the enemy from above. And to detect this, we can use some simple vector math. So first, I'll calculate a vector starting from center of enemy and ending at center of player. This will be the player direction. And let's normalize this since we are only interested in the direction and not the magnitude of this vector. Then next, to detect if the player is colliding from above, we can find the dot product of player direction and an unit vector pointing upwards. For exactly parallel vectors, this dot product will be 1. But in our case, since we want to allow a range of angles for which player can hit from above, we'll check if this dot product is greater than 0.85. So whenever this condition is true, it means player has hit the enemy from above. And in the else part, we can safely call the hit method and reduce player's health. Now just to test if this is working as expected, let's call remove from parent here. This will make the enemy disappear when we attack it. Also to avoid creating a new up vector for each player enemy collision for each enemy, We'll create a static final up vector in this class. And then we can use this common up vector for all the enemies. Now let's run this and see if it works. So you can see that when I hit the enemy normally, my health is reducing and the hit effect is running as expected. But now if I try to jump on this enemy, it gets disappeared. This indicates that our logic is working as expected. So next, let's polish this up a little by adding a fade effect to our enemy instead of directly removing it. For this, I'll add a fade out opacity effect with duration as 0.2 second. And in the on complete of this effect, I'll just call remove from parent. Now let's save this and go back to the game. If I try to hit the enemy now, you can see that they are now fading away before getting removed. And just to give players some more feedback, I'll also make the player automatically jump once they successfully kill an enemy. To do this, let's go to the player class. Here, in the update method, you can see that to make the player jump, 
both jump input and is on ground needs to be true. But as both these members are private, we cannot directly access them from outside the class. To solve this, let's create a new method for player called jump. Inside this method, I'll just set jump input and is on ground to true. And now back in on collision start of enemy class, after adding the opacity effect, I can just call other dot jump. Let's save this and see it in action. Okay, and as you can see, on hitting the enemy from above, the player automatically jumps. And that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.